At intake, when the offender comes into the program, he's normally sent here by the justice system. And we have to start rebuilding their life from the ground up. And then I end up getting caught selling drugs and uh, got 11 year sentence and went back to prison. And the more I stayed in prison, the more I hardened my heart against authorities and thought, why me? Why do I always get caught and everything? And uh, I got back out and uh, began to sell drugs again. And this time I, I started to use them. We have three halfway houses on campus. One is the Hosanna House for Females, which houses 42 female offenders. One is the Brown Annex, which houses 14 offenders, uh, probation and parole offenders. And one is the Hay House itself, uh, which uh, houses 26 offenders. I got caught for drinking and driving and went to jail for quite a while, actually. I spent a year in Bluntville and uh, they, I, I kept telling them that I needed some help, that I needed some kind of program that would, would help me, not just to kick me back out and let me do it again, that I needed help. So they offered me this program, and that's how I became to come at the Hay House. Was when I was released from Bluntville, I came to here, and I stayed here for six months. And I've done everything that a person needs to do to better themselves. In Sullivan County, if there was no John R. Hay House, no Brown Annex, no Hosanna House, uh, the offenders would be either placed on probation or they would be go directly to the prison system. Like love is pain, that's, you know, when you come to jail, love is pain because it kills you being in there away from your love. They said my bullet holes are pretty much my rise and fall, everything I've, I've gained, I've lost it all. Self-made because, you know, I grew up, I, I, I made myself who I am, you know. Yeah, I've gone from uh, here, right here all the way down to the tops of my feet. And on the tops of my feet, I got stand alone. Because when you're in jail, you're pretty much standing there all by yourself. You know? Yeah, I've got, I got plenty of them. I've got them everywhere. I wish I could take them off. A lot of them. I've, I lost jobs. I've lost my home. I've lost almost everything that I've ever bought from the time I was 16 and first worked. I lost it all because whenever I came here, my roommate well pretty much took it and split <laughs> because I was here and she was there with it. So I came home to nothing again for the second time. You just have to get sick of losing it. You have to get tired of letting the people that you care about down and quit pretty much lying to yourself and to them too because you can't tell them you're going to do it. And even though you have good intentions, as they say, the road to hell is paved on good intentions. I mean. You can't just want it to happen, you have to actually mean it and try for it. The reason that we believe that the residential facility is so important is because once they come here, they are already failing in the community. They do not have what they need to make it as productive members in the community. What we do is try to provide the needs that they have. Three meals a day, clothing, shoes, a job placement, uh, the ability to earn money and pay what they owe, uh, random drug screenings, cl very close supervision, 24-hour-a-day uh, supervision, uh, treatment on campus, those things that allow them to work in a community of other offenders who are trying to reach that same goal, and that is to escape a prison that they've created for themselves even on the outside not necessarily behind prison bars, but the prison that they live in, in their own world.